Hello everybody, I'm Bart Massey. Welcome once again to Computer Sound and Music. Today we're going to wrap up all of this with a little bit of a talk about the role of music in machine learning. A very little bit because it's a topic at the edge of my expertise and a topic that's really very cutting edge today. So I hope you're doing all well out there. Let's uh, get started. So these are these slides were made last year by uh, Leila Huana, who graciously let me use them. I feel a little bad about using them, to be honest, because she knows a lot more about this topic than I do. And so I'm just going to breeze through these and give you some idea of what's going on in this exciting area a little bit. So when we talk about machine learning, we're going to be thinking about music as data. And that's a view that sort of we've been led to throughout the course, but it's one that's gonna be really important here. We're gonna talk about how we build machine learning models to analyze that data and get interesting things out of it. And we'll talk very briefly about some of the things that have been done and what's still out there to do. So let's start with some basic concepts. So the kind of machine learning that's popular these days is what's called supervised machine learning. It's usually done, it's often done in the modern environment by so-called neural networks, which don't have a lot to do with neurons, but do have a lot to do with networks of computation. And the idea here is what's called supervised machine learning. I'm going to get a bunch of data I'm going to mark up the data somehow so that it's correct. And I'm going to feed all that data to my machine learner. And it's going to try to learn what makes the correct output as a function of the inputs that it's given. So we typically break our data up into a bunch of features and a classification. That would be the normal way we would go. And so for each data item for each instance we tell the machine learner its features we tell the machine learner its classification and we let the machine learner try to figure out how those features are producing that classification and when we've got that right as or as right as we can figure out how to get it we then want to validate it. So we take some more data that's been classified correctly and we try to f make sure that we haven't cheated because it's really easy for a machine learner, learner to memorize all of the data that you give it. And so it's going to be very good at predicting the classification of things that it's already seen. And now if we see that it's generalized, if it also correctly predicts the classification of things that it hasn't seen before, then we've got a really powerful tool. And it's very expensive typically to do this kind of learning in terms of computation time, but computation time's cheap and people are expensive. So this can be a much faster way to learn a task than actually having a human try to figure out what's going on. And, and the sensitivity tends to be good. These statistical methods tend to work very well with very weak signals, which is something humans aren't so great at. So, you know, what is this data we're talking about? Well, it's typically just a bunch of numbers. We're gonna, like I say, pick out what's called features in the thing. If it's photos, we might be looking for what pixel every pixel of the photo is. That's a big pile of data about the photo. If it's audio, which is more relevant to us, it might be the literal PCM samples. We might just feed them in raw, or we might try to do something to pre-classify to reduce the feature space, like turning it all into frequency data with an FFT, or low pass filtering it, or so forth and so on. Uh, trying to reduce the resolution, downsampling it maybe. So we're, we're trying to sort of get features that are orthogonal enough that a small number of them will tell us what we need to know. So what do we want to find out about the music? We've got an audio signal, or we've got a score or we've got a MIDI sequence 
there's things we'd like to know about that. What are the dynamics? What's the tempo? What's the rhythms? There's this long list. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. But all the things we talked about last time when we talked about audio music analysis, we'd love to be able to pull those out of audio samples, which is hard mode, or at least pull them out of a MIDI sequence or a score so that we actually know what's going on with the piece of music. And, you know, like this list says, there's a lot of possible representations. Piano rolls are a thing. The modern equivalent of piano rolls is used by what's called a piano roll diagram and a sequencer. Uh, we certainly have textual representations. We've talked about lead sheets, chords. We've worked with audio signals all quarter, MIDI. We might have some kind of rhythmic information or waveforms. You know, there's just a lot of stuff that we can use to feed this thing. And then the question is, well, I've been waving my hands at blah, blah, supervised machine learner, blah, blah. What do we use? The most common thing are feed forward neural networks, which work directly off the features, recurrent neural networks, and long-term, sh long short-term memories, which are very related ways of thinking about the idea that for audio, we have an interesting problem, right? Because really time plays a huge role in audio. It's important that the samples come one after the other, or the MIDI events come one after the other. And RNNs and LSTMs are a way of remembering past stuff that you've seen at the same time that you're looking at the current thing you're seeing in a in a datum and that helps us sort of build things that make sense over time convolutional neural networks which are another feedback mechanism in their whole own thing gans in which we uh, actually try to have one neural network synthesize instances that are hard for another neural network to learn and that's that's generated some really interesting stuff reinforcement learning in general where we don't necessarily do all our training up front but we have the learner learn as it goes uh, we give it some kind of error signal when it gets things wrong and we just expose it to the real world and evolutionary algorithms are something to not forget i personally happen to be a big fan of very simple machine learning systems, things like k-nearest neighbors and Bayesian inference and that kind of, you know, Bayesian, naive Bayesian inference and that kind of stuff that can do a lot of machine learning per unit effort to understand and machine time to run. But however you choose to do it, sort of trying to learn a model in one of these systems, it's, there's a lot of similarities across the systems. And you know, here's some issues that are super important. I hope these slides are big enough to read. Um, splitting up time. How do we decide global time versus local time? How can we understand what's going on temporally in a piece of music? If you don't get the note endings or note starts from a MIDI file or something, if you're given audio, then it's really tricky to understand to f just find the starts and stops of notes in a piece of music. The input coding and feature extraction, it's interesting to think there again about what kinds of space reductions we can do in the feature space before we feed it to the neural network. And there's all kinds of games you can play with using a neural network to decide how to encode an instance for another neural network that are very exciting. Uh, the so-called deep neural networks that are very popular now, a lot of their power is that each layer is doing some piece of work on the way to the next layer. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff. One of the big problems typically with machine learning is that to have the learner do good generalization takes a lot of data, and we don't necessarily have a lot of data. I mean, we have a lot of data. Lord knows there's enough music around in whatever format you want it in, but remember, to, for the machine learner to do any good, it has to be not just data, but correctly classified data. It has to be data where you know the right answers, because otherwise the machine learner can't really learn from it. There are these sort of discovery learners that try to figure out what's interesting about a bunch of stuff, but that's very far out there on the spectrum. And most of the time you really want to make progress by providing giant piles of classified data, and we just don't mostly have that. One of the reasons that rec speech recognition, a particular case of 
machine learning driven audio analysis worked so well is that it was easy to build up large standard corpora of speech utterances with their decoded into words being pretty accurate. And that gave a real large pile of grist to the machine learning mill to try to figure out what is going on with this audio signal that made those particular words happen. Here's some music ones in particular. Uh, there's three examples linked here. The one that I know the most about is Project Magenta, which is Google's thing, which is about generating music. And I would highly encourage you to check out that doodle that is kind of an interesting, you give some theme and the machine learner tries to fill in a nice, in the style of a famous composer piece around your melodic theme. And that's, that, that's really interesting stuff to me. So last and what least, you know, is this is music gonna get conquered tomorrow the way chess did a couple of years ago? Yeah, who knows, right? Music is very, very complicated, and there's a whole bunch of questions. Uh, Layla phrases it in terms of creativity, but I just phrase it in terms of all the things that make humans human. There's a lot going on here, which is social, which is learned by humans over a long period of time, which is tangled up from a bunch of different domains. This is a really, really hard problem. Is it as hard as mathematics, which is higher mathematics, which is the other really hard problem machine learning and other kinds of AI haven't made much progress on? I don't know, I don't know, but I know it's hard and there's a lot to be done. So that, is a really quick overview of machine learning and music. It's uh, a huge, huge topic. And I know we often say I didn't even scratch the surface here. I didn't even get near the surface, really. There's so much surface to take a look at there. But I hope it was interesting. And I hope it inspired you to look into it more if you're interested in this kind of thing. Thanks much for listening. It's been great talking with you for all these lectures. I hope you stay safe and well out there. And I hope to see you in the future. Take care.